Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Firm Bill Friday on Facebook Live. My name is Rochelle Sparko, and I am the policy director at the Carolina Farm Stewardship Association. And we're here this week yet again to talk about five things that we think that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week. So first, I have lots of handouts today. It's going to be wonderful. And I think they're right side up, yes. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this, everyone. All right, so five things that you need to know, um, mostly about the conservation title, but our first thing that you need to know this week is only partially related to conservation. Rumors, rumors, rumors. So when we started Facebook living about Farm Bill stuff about a month ago, we thought that the Farm Bill was coming out any day now, and we've talked about that in previous episodes of Farm Bill Friday. Um, where we talked about what the chair's mark is. Um, so if this all sounds weird to you, go back and watch the previous episodes. Um, what we're hearing right now is, well, first, no farm bill yet, guys. Um, and there are a ton of rumors about what's going on and when it's going to come out. It sounds like the holdup is related mostly to the nutrition title. So I'm going to hold up an old handout that you all have seen before. Okay, so we've got um, a pie chart of where all the money goes, this is just the ag money, right? And we've seen a pie chart before about the nutrition money, right? This is funding for programs like SNAP, which back in the olden days used to be called food stamps, um, and a number of other nutrition programs to make sure that largely low-income Americans have access to um, enough food. So that nutrition title takes up a, a huge chunk of farm bill spending, and um, every year recently, this farm bill year and last farm bill year, which was 2014, um, there's been some conflict about how much money to spend in that nutrition title and how, um, what the programs should require of people in order to obtain uh, the benefits of those nutrition programs. So this year is no different. Um, we do understand that there's some conflict there that needs to get worked out before we'll see a farm bill uh, or the chair's mark of the farm bill. Um, what we're hearing right now is that it is likely to come out in early April, maybe the week of April 6th. So keep it tuned here. <laughs> and as soon as we have a new farm bill or uh, the chair's mark, we will certainly dive into that and start talking about what's in there and what's changed. For now, we're going to continue to focus on the 2014 farm bill uh, and make sure that you all know what was in there. Um, and what we think we're keeping an eye on in the next Farm Bill, in the 2018 Farm Bill. So that's where we get into talking about conservation. So we're going to talk about the conservation title this week. Uh, the second thing that we think that you need to know this week is that conservation practices are funded through the Farm Bill. Um, and so what are conservation practices? What's conservation? We've got lots of questions and so many handouts. All right, so this one we've all seen before too. Here's a list of our farm bill titles, and you can see that Title II is conservation. Um, so it's right up in there. So let's talk about what that actually might mean. Um, all right, so we know it's a title, conservation, right? Just like we've got the nutrition title, just like we've got the specialty crop and horticulture title, which we talked about last week. All right, so in order to help us understand what goes into the conservation title, I've brought back our very favorite title bucket. Now, I received some complaints last week that it's much too big, so I've tried to back up a little bit, and I'll also hold it this way so it seems less enormous than when I hold it this way. All right, so what are we putting in the title bucket this week? What kinds of things go into that conservation title? All right, so the conservation title helps to fund um, activities that help support soil health, and to represent soil health, I have two things. This awesome coloring book that USDA put out Mighty Mini Microbes Tale, which is all about um, how soil health is good and how we support soil health. And you can color it in, which I haven't done yet, but I completely plan on it. Um, I have a few in my office if anybody wants one. Um, and then I also thought people might want to see actual soil. So this is soil from my garden. That goes in our title bucket. Um, the conservation title also funds things that are good for water. So here we go, jar of water. It also funds conservation practices um, like cover cropping. So here you go, I've got a bunch of clover seed 
Um, when you plant clover, it basically holds the soil in place. Um, conservation practices also include things like preserving wildlife habitat and pollinator habitats. So I have this amazing little bee from the Department of Agriculture in North Carolina going into our tidal bucket. Boom. All right, so now you have a little bit of an idea of what kinds of things go into our tidal bucket, right? Things related to uh, soil health and preserving topsoil through cover cropping, um, water, wildlife habitat. That's what's in our tidal bucket this week. All right, thanks for bearing with me. I really like those. I like handouts. Um, okay. So now that we've talked a little bit in a sort of silly way about what goes in the conservation title, now we'll talk about it in a more wonky way. Um, so there are some pretty major programs in the conservation title. Um, there's money in there for agricultural easements. Um, this is a concept that probably isn't super familiar to folks that are not intimately involved in agriculture, but basically um, agricultural lands are often subject to development pressure and farmers can make a lot more money by selling their farmland to a developer when they're ready to retire or have some large expenses like medical expenses or something um, than they can by keeping it in farmland. It's not as valuable um, as farmland and in a capitalistic money way. Um, and so the conservation title will pay farmers um, for the development rights to that land, basically. Um, put an easement on that land that makes it impossible to develop it or use it for things other than agriculture. Um, so that's one thing that the conservation title pays for. Um, there's also money in there for programs that include what are called cost share and technical assistance. So cost share basically is um, a, a term that refers to a slew of different programs, both in the conservation title and elsewhere. Um, that help farmers to pay to implement good practices on their land, in this case, good practices related to things in our title bucket, um, that they might not otherwise implement because they don't tend to increase the farm's income. Um, so farmers may know it's really important for me to fence my cattle out of this stream that runs through my farm, but it's also really expensive to fence the cattle out of this stream, and so I can't manage to make ends meet um, if I were to spend the money that's coming in from the beef that I am selling, um, and so I'm not gonna do it. So the cows are going into the stream and causing erosion and making the water dirty. Um, so that's one example of the type of practice that cost share might help pay for. Um, generally speaking, cost share programs in the conservation realm pay for about three quarters of the cost of the conservation practice, making it much more affordable for farmers to uh, fence out their cattle or do lots of other good things. Um, and for certain groups of farmers, beginning farmers, um, what USDA calls socially disadvantaged farmers, which basically is farmers of color, um, and veteran farmers, um, the conservation title will pay for up to 90%. Um, of the cost of implementing those practices. Um, also, I mentioned technical assistance. So some things are pretty simple. You build a fence, you keep out the cattle. Um, other things can be more complicated, like figuring out a crop rotation cycle. Um, how many different fields do you need to have? How often can you cycle through and build soil health if you're growing the same thing over and over again? Um, so there's also money to provide technical assistance to farmers, basically to send a professional out to talk to them and work with them to come up with a plan um, to implement best management practices on their farm that may require the farmer to change behavior or do things and do things differently um, as opposed to just building something and calling it good. Um, so there's funding in there uh, in that conservation title for technical assistance as well. Um, I wanted to touch quickly on conservation in the Carolinas. Um, we're the Carolina Farm Stewardship Association, and so working in North and South Carolina, I took a look to see sort of how, do, how are we using conservation funding from the Farm Bill here um, in these two states. So we talked a little bit about um, easements, and I'm going to go back to that a little bit more in a bit, but right now we're going to talk about environmentally sensitive land. So the Farm Bill funds program, a program that pays farmers not to grow on environmentally sensitive land, right? When, um, when you have land that, let's go back to our stream bed example, that's right next to a stream coming through there and plowing it up every year is not going to be very good for the water. Um, and there'll be runoff into the stream, which is not great. 
Um, and so to pull, to encourage farmers not to grow in places that um, are not the best for the environment, they'll actually pay farmers to do that. Um, typically, the types of farmers that will um, benefit from that type of program are commodity farmers, right? They're growing things like corn or soybeans, um, tobacco in North Carolina in particular, um, large-scale agricultural operations. Um, when commodity prices are low, as they are right now and have been for several years, um, farmers are very interested in enrolling their marginal lands or their uh, environmentally sensitive lands in that program, um, which means that that program becomes more expensive to the federal government. And so one of the things that we're keeping an eye on um, during this farm bill process is kind of if we're going to expand the number of acres that the government will pull out of production um, in order to preserve it for environmental reasons, where's that money going to come from? Um, are they going to take it away from other programs in the conservation title? So that's just one thing to, to know that we'll be looking for when we do see the chairs mark in a couple of weeks or months, whenever it comes, rumors, rumors, rumors. Um, a couple of other programs that I want to talk about that we um, take advantage of here in the Carolinas are a program called EQIP and another program called CSP. Um, agriculture loves acronyms. So EQIP stands for Environmental Quality Incentives Program. I'm reading it for you to make sure I get it right. And CSP stands for Conservation Stewardship Program. So these two programs fund cost share and technical assistance um, to farmers to implement and adopt conservation practices on their farms. The funding is limited. Um, USDA right now turns away about three quarters of the people, the farms that are eligible to receive uh, technical assistance and cost share. Um, EQIP funds some basic conservation practices um, that support the environment, crop rotation plans, cover cropping, integrated pest management, right, so that we aren't hurting our plastic bees. Um, it also pays concentrated animal feeding operations to build lagoons um, for pig poop um, and spray fields. So just so you know, that's a part of this program too. Um, CSP, the other program I mentioned, the Conservation Stewardship Program, um, basically funds practices that go above and beyond that have significant benefit to soil health, water quality, and wildlife habitat. We have a lot of farmers in the Carolinas taking up EQIP um, in part thanks to CFSA's Farm Services team that helps farmers qualify to get the cost share to implement those practices. Um, and we're looking into trying to get more of our farms to participate in the CSP. Um, we have lower, n lower numbers there, um, in part because we think our farmers don't know about it. So farmers, if you're watching, CSP, give us a call about it sometime. We're looking into it. Uh, and then I said we were going to come back to that conservation easement program, right, that pulls ag land out of, um, out of development pressure. Um, all right, so how do we want to talk about this? So the federal government provides some money to do that. States, um, both North and South Carolina, actually provide state dollars to do this as well. Um, and there are a number of land trusts, nonprofit organizations in both states, North and South Carolina, that all work together. Um, to put agricultural working lands um, into easements. And between the two states, um, we've saved tens of thousands of acres of farmland from development pressure. Um, so this is a program that really works. Um, and I know that South Carolina right now is in the process of reauthorizing their land, uh, their conservation bank. So two thumbs up, give a call, let your legislators know down in Columbia um, that you support that kind of preservation of working lands. Um, so that we have a way to match federal dollars in South Carolina. Um, those programs do sometimes require a, a state match or a match from somewhere. Um, so it's not just federal money that's doing this easement work alone. So we do need South Carolina to, to, to keep funding that conservation bank. All right, so thanks for bearing with me through the longest of the five things that you need to know this week about the conservation title. Now we're on to thing number three. The conservation title was added in 1985 to that farm bill. It makes up a pretty large part of the bill. So here's our non-nutrition breakdown of where funds are spent in the farm bill. So you can see that 28% of the money in the farm bill, that's not nutrition money, um, is going towards conservation. Um, 
And now I want to talk a little bit about funding for these programs, right? 28% seems like uh, a lot, right? More than a quarter. That's pretty good. Um, I will say, though, that the 2014 Farm Bill was the first one that reduced funding for conservation programs since the um, title was first introduced in 1985. Um, so there was a $4 billion cut to conservation programs in the 2014 Farm Bill. Um, that $4 billion was scheduled to take effect over the course of 10 years. And another $2 billion was cut from these programs because of a parliamentary rule called sequestration. Right, So we've seen basically... Um, a six billion dollar cut in these programs. Um, the sequestration requires cuts across the board, so it affects all of all, almost every program there is. Um, and so, just wanted to bring your attention to that, um, especially in light of the fact that we think that there is likely um, going to be a lot of um, pressure on Congress to fund. Um, the, the payments to farmers who aren't farming on environmentally sensitive lands uh, and that we know that that's going to take up more of the money and we're not sure where the money that, uh, where will they get that money from? Um, they can't just invent it out of whole cloth, more parliamentary rules. Um, and so they're going to have to take it from somewhere and we're just keeping an eye on, on where that's coming from. Uh, all right. So our fourth thing that you need to know about the conservation title this week is that conservation programs have mandatory funding. So we've talked a little bit about this in, in previous episodes. Basically what it means to have mandatory funding is that you're in pretty good shape even if there, the new farm bill isn't passed by the time the current farm bill expires, which we all know is September 30th, 2018. Um, and it also means that there's no annual appropriations process for these programs. The mandatory funds are delegated or designated in the Farm Bill itself, and the uh, beneficiaries of those programs don't have to keep coming back year after year after year after year to ask for an appropriation to actually fund those. That's very different from last week's Farm Bill Friday discussion where we were talking about specialty crops and horticulture. Those all have discretionary funding. They all have to come back every single year and ask for funds to keep continue implementing um, those programs. So not here. Um, all right. Do we want to say, oh, I did have a little um, caveat to that, which is wonky. So close your ears and sing if you're not into wonky. But um, even though these programs have mandatory funding, there is a process in place now in Congress called CHIMPS. So CHIMPS stands for Changes in Mandatory Program Spending. It basically gives Congress the ability to come in and like pull out money from mandatory programs um, whenever they feel that they need to. And so conservation funding has been the victim of CHIMPS um, over the past four years as um, since the 2014 Farm Bill was passed. Um, so that that pot of money has been raided on occasion by Congress to pay for other things. Uh, okay, you can take your fingers out of your ears now if you're not into wonky, we're back with fun. All right, so the last thing that you need to know about the conservation title this week is that your support can help farmers access resources to farm in ways that are good for the environment, right? We know that there's mandatory funding for conservation programs, but we do also know that, these cons that the money for these conservation programs is oftentimes going towards um, concentrated animal feeding operations, um, CAFOs. They're able to access much larger chunks of money um, than, say, organic farmers are. There's an $80,000 cap for EQIP OI, um, the organic initiative that's part of EQIP, whereas CAFO farms can access up to $400,000 to implement conservation practices on their farm. We also know that because uh, commodity prices are low, we're likely to see some funding moving from programs perhaps like EQIP um, or CSP into that, um, that program that, takes, uh, that gives farmers money not to farm environmentally sensitive lands. Um, so there's definitely stuff we're gonna need to do in this title um, to make sure that local organic farms have access to funds to do good things for the environment. Um, and so if these are issues that interest you, may I encourage you to sign up for CFSA's action alerts. Here's the site where you can go to do that, bit.ly backslash axn alerts. 
Um, we'll also get the link up there in the comments for you all um, so that you can just click on that and uh, sign up for those alerts. And as soon as we know more about what's going on in the Farm Bill, um, once we see the chairs mark, um, if there are issues in the conservation title or any of the other titles that help benefit local organic farming, you will be among the first to know. Um, and we'll certainly be helping you to figure out what it is we need you to say to your member of the house um, to let them know what you would like to see changed in the Farm Bill, if anything. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us for this week's conservation title, um, Deep Dive. And we will see you all again uh, next Friday. Thanks for joining and I'll talk to you all soon.